Today's lesson is a precursor to puberty with our primary students. Yay, alliteration! Hi, I'm Nadine Thornhill, sexuality educator. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. This is my series, Save Sex Ed, where I teach every sex education module from Ontario's 2015 Health and Phys Ed curriculum. You can click the I above me if you want to learn more about what this whole series is all about, and you can uh, click the subscribe button down below, plus the bell, that way you won't miss any videos. The Health and Phys Ed curriculum for grades one through eight outline the following learning objectives for grade two. Outline the basic stages of human development, infant, child, adolescent, adult, and older adult, and outline related bodily changes, and identify factors that are important for healthy growth. This is really about teaching children that bodies change as they age, and later on, they will learn how puberty is a significant part of that human growth and development. For this activity, you're going to need five containers. So those could be uh, buckets or bowls, or if you have, you know, Tupperware containers, or you have those, um, you know, children sometimes have those containers that are nested inside each other. And if you can find containers where they get progressively larger, that's great. But if you can't, it's not necessary. You're also going to need something to fill your container. So that could be like beads or balls or little bean bags. Uh, you can use like little pieces of Lego. Before you start the activity, you want to label each of your containers. So if they are, you know, containers that are different sizes, start with the smallest. If they're all the same size, it doesn't matter. You're going to label them baby, child, teenager, adult, older adult, or elder. Gather your class or group together and show them the first container labeled baby. Now ask them, what are some changes we might see in a baby's body as they begin to grow? Now babies are new, and so they are learning to do a lot of very basic but very important things. A baby may learn to laugh or smile. Babies can learn to burp. Babies learn to make sounds, and they may even learn a few simple words. Uh, some babies start to learn how to uh, control their hands, their arms, their legs. They may learn how to crawl, and they may even learn how to stand up and start to walk a little bit. Now, each time a group member mentions a change that happens in a baby's body, you can uh, put a little bit of your, your filling into your container, or you can have, you know, your students or your group members, you know, put the filling in as they come up with different things. You can mention here that while many babies learn to do these things or their bodies will go through these changes, uh, some babies won't uh, go through these changes until they're a little bit older. And then there are some babies who won't go through all of these changes because everybody's body and everybody's brains are different. Next ask what babies need to grow healthy and strong. And again, you know, put a little bit of your filling, your stones, your water, your snow, your sand, whatever, into your container as you get the answers. Some things that most babies need to grow strong and healthy are things like milk. And when they get a little bit older, uh, some nutritious food, they need love, they need uh, play, they need space to move around, they need uh, interaction or stimulation, so they need to be talked to, they need to be played with, um, most babies need to be held or cuddled. Mention that while a lot of babies need these things to be happy and healthy, again, bodies are different and babies are different. So for example, some babies are really sensitive to touch and don't actually really like being held that much. Some babies are born earlier than expected and they may also need, you know, to be in the hospital longer. They may need to be connected to machines to help them 
grow to a weight where they are strong enough to go home and live with their families. Now explain that as a baby continues to grow, eventually that baby will become a child. Now, if you have containers where one is larger than the other, this is when you can take the contents from your baby container and pour them into the container marked child because all of the things that have helped the baby grow will also be part of that child. Hey! With our container labeled child, we are going to ask our group or our students the same two questions. First, how do children's bodies change as they grow? They often go from learning how to, you know, crawl and walk to learning how to run. They might learn how to ride a bike. They might learn how to climb trees. Kids who use wheelchairs or assistive devices may learn how to operate those things on their own. Children often learn more words. They learn how to speak in sentences. Many children learn how to read. Many children learn how to write. They may start to develop a skill like being able to dance, being able to play an instrument, doing gymnastics, all sorts of things. Explain that childhood is a time of tremendous growth, both in our bodies and also in our brains, but again, be sure to include the experiences of kids who may have disabilities, kids who are uh, neuroatypical, or kids who just have developmental differences. Things that children need to grow healthy and strong are love, they need a safe place to live, they need uh, healthy food, fruits and vegetables and whole grains and calcium and all of those good things. Children also need responsibilities. So that may be things like uh, chores or helping around the house. They may be able to take on some more responsibilities in terms of being independent. Maybe they can uh, walk to and from school on their own. They may help to take care of a pet, but that is how children learn what they're capable of and it helps them to develop skills that they will need as they get even older. And so you are going to move through your buckets and move through the life stage in this way, talking about the changes that occur at each life stage and the things that people need at each stage of life to continue to grow and thrive. I will have a handout on my website that lists the various life stages and some changes and also uh, things that people need to grow and thrive at each stage. And you can uh, download that either by clicking the eye above me. I will also have it linked in the description down below. This also seems like a good time to mention that a lot of my knowledge around human growth and development comes from a very like Eurocentric colonizer type model. There's an example in the curriculum that mentions um, the Anishinaabe approach to the life cycle. So something interesting to do might be to get, you know, an indigenous educator in your classroom to talk about, you know, human growth and development from a different cultural perspective. And if you do that, um, pay that educator well, because that is really valuable knowledge uh, that is, and you know, they're taking the time, so pay them. You can do this same activity at home with your child. And the great thing is, is you can personalize it. So you can ask them, what did they need when they were a baby? What do they need now that they're a child? You know, how is their body changing? How do they think their body will continue to change as they grow older and go through those other stages of life? Another option is that if you have kept family photos and you have photos of yourself as a child, as a teenager, as a younger adult, um, it can be fun to show those to your kids. I remember I used to love looking at pictures of my parents, my mom in particular had a lot of old family photos and my grandparents had photos of her. And it really just blew my mind to think of my mom as having been a kid like I was at the time. What do you think you'll be doing in 10 or 20 or 50 years? What do you think I'll be doing in 10 or 20 or 50, however many years you want? What age or stage of life are you most looking forward to and why? Is there an age or stage of life that you are not so much looking forward to and why? I have a couple of other videos about how you can have 
similar conversations with your kids about you know bodies changing over the course of our lives and I will link to those down below. There's another video here on YouTube called Our Wonderful Bodies. It's an old cartoon. It looks like it's maybe from the 70s and 80s that goes through the stages of human development. Now, because it is dated, um, some of the language might be a touch problematic or just antiquated. So I would suggest watching that one yourself first and seeing if you think it's something that would be appropriate for your kid or your classroom. There's another great channel on YouTube here called uh, SciShow Kids and they have lots of videos for kids about all sorts of, you know, things related to science, including human development. So check out their channel and then you can just go in the search and search for things like bodies or humans and there will be some great videos there that you can watch again with your kids. I will also have a link to an info sheet down below called Differing Abilities and this is a great sort of general info sheet that covers um, development from infancy through adolescence but includes a lot of information um, relevant to kids who are neuroatypical or kids with disabilities and I want to give a shout out to my colleague Kevin Mintz because he sourced a lot of great material specifically for um, kids and youth with disabilities who are and who are neuroatypical or for people who um, may be teaching kids who are neuroatypical or have disabilities. So thank you so much, Kevin. Um, yeah, this is amazing. In the comments below, let me know where you see yourself in, let's say, 20 years. So in 20 years, I will be in my 60s. I hope to still be teaching sex ed. Um, I would love to build myself sort of a modest, custom home and I would like to uh, perhaps have a dog like a lab or a German Shepherd or maybe both. That's all for now. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye. You can help me continue creating free sex ed content by supporting me on Patreon. For as little as $3 a month, you'll get access to all sorts of goodies. So head on over to patreon.com slash Nadine Thornhill or click the link down in the description below.